Hi everyone, this is pre-algebra lesson 7-5, compare proportional relationships. In this lesson, we'll be able to compare proportional relationships represented in different ways. Let's look at, solve and discuss it. May Lee is going apple picking. She's choosing between two places. The cost of a crate of apples at each place is shown. Um, where should Maylee go to pick her apples? Explain. So for Annie's apple orchard, it says pick your own. 20 pounds is $7.25. And then Franklin's fruit orchard says pick your own. 12, uh, 12 pounds is $5. So every time um, she picks Twelve pounds is five dollars for Franklin's, and every time she picks twenty pounds is seven point two five dollars for Annie's. So you wanna see? You don't know how much he's uh how how many May Lee's gonna get, but uh, you can see you can find the unit rates and compare the unit rates, right? Remember the unit rates? Oh, you better. <laughs> so apples at Annie's. Annie's will be um, 7.25 per 20 pound. What would that be? How much would it be per pound is the unit rate. So if you divide 7.25 by 20, you should get 0 0.36. Mm-hmm per pound. Let me double check. Seven point two five divided by 20 is 0 0.3625. So you can round it up to 0 0.36 per pound. What about Franklin's? Um, $5 per 12 pounds. So that means five divided by 12, is 0 0.41666 repeated. So that could be about 0 0.42. So whose apple is more expensive to pick per pound? Franklin's. Franklin's apple is more expensive. It seems like you're paying less just because, oh, that's $5 and that's $7.25. But Annie gives you a lot more apples. Um, with the same money, actually. Okay, so the best, the better choice would be, um, the better choice would be Annie's if she picks a lot more apples than just, you know, um, just twelve pounds. But if she's just, if she's just gonna pick an apple less than twenty pounds then it saves her money to go to Franklin's. So um, you don't know how, how many apples she needs. So 20 pounds would be a lot to carry. So if she has a car or if she just wants to, um, unless she has a car or you know a truck maybe, um, she might just go for like a short, apple picking experience. So she might choose Franklin's if it's less than 20 and she, but it would be better for her to choose Anna's if she's gonna get more than 20 pounds. Okay, so mainly should go to Annie's if she is picking apples more than 20 pounds. She should go to Franklin's. She is picking apples less than 20 pounds. Okay. So focus on math practices. Which representation did you use to compare prices? Explain why. 
we used unit rates. The prices of Apple so that we could compare prices easily. <clears throat> okay, how can you compare proportional relationship represented in different ways? Yes, your proportions are back. So if you need a reminder or a review about proportions, go back to go back a few chapters, a few uh, topics. Okay, topic five was about equivalent expressions. Topic three was using proportional relationships. So you might have to review on topic three if you don't remember. So example one, comparing proportional relationships represented by tables and graphs. Mira is researching increasing speeds of, uh, researching cruising speeds of different planes. Which airplane has a greater cruising speed? Cessna is represented by a table and jet airliner is represented by a graph. So in five minutes, it goes 40 kilometers for Cessna. And then, and then jet, in five minutes, it goes 1,250 meters. So what is that in kilometers? 1,000 meters is one kilometer. So that 1,250 meters is 1.25 kilometers. So it's basically so yeah. So basically, one pick a point five comma forty says for Cessna, right? Um, that means. Jet has five comma one point two five kilometers. Is that right? Huh? I think the graph is wrong, right? Look at step two. The graph is wrong here. So let's not use this graph. I think you can just use that to represent the point. Okay, I don't think I don't think this is the graph we're using. So I don't know where this graph came from, but I guess this is the graph for the flight we're um, looking for. Okay, so we're comparing Cessna's flight to this one. All right, so 40 divided by five is eight. Why are we doing that? We want to find the unit rate. 40 kilometer per five minute means eight kilometers per one minute, okay? And so look at this graph. One point will tell you how many distances, how, how much distance you travel per minute. So um, Boeing 747 has points 4,60 and 6,90. That means it goes 60 kilometers per four minute or 90 kilometers per six minute, and they should be equivalent ratio. And if you simplify that, that's going to be 15 kilometers per minute. So comparing 15 kilometers per minute and eight kilometers per minute, obviously Boeing 747 has greater cruising speed than the Cessna. Okay, so let's look at try number one. The graph represents the rate at which Mario makes origami birds for a craft fair. The equation y equals 2.5x represents the number of birds y Josh makes in x minutes. Who makes birds at a faster rate? Okay, so y equals 2.5x is Josh's equation. Okay, 
okay? And then Marlowe's is represented by the graph, okay? Look at some points here. You have 20 comma four, and then 40 comma eight. So find the unit rate. That means um, Marlowe, oh, it's Marlowe, not Mario, okay? <laughs> Eight origamis. He has eight birds per 40 minutes. That means how many birds in a minute? Eight divided by 40, 0 0.2 birds per minute. Okay. What about Josh? 2.5 represents what? The slope. So that means he. He, uh, um, he makes 2.5 birds per minute. That's a lot, that's a lot faster. Okay, so um, how do you know? You can plug in, or if you don't know what the slope means, you can plug in some values for X and figure it out. If X is one in one minute, It means y is equal to 2.5 because you multiply 2.5 by one. Okay, so that's your point, one comma 2.5. That means he makes 2.5 origamis per minute. So Josh is making at a much faster rate. Okay, so unit rate helps you compare the rates faster. Josh makes origami birds at a faster rate is the, is the answer. So convince me, if you were to graph the data for Josh and Marlowe on the same coordinate plane, how would the two lines compare? So Marlowe's um, graph is already there, but should we graph Josh's? So that means if Josh spends 20 minutes, 20 times 2.5 would be um, 50. He would make 50 origami. So 20, that's way high, right? Yeah, that's way up. So it's going to be a lot faster, OK? The line representing Josh's rate would be a lot more steeper. So you don't have to actually draw all the graph, but just know that the line representing Josh would be. Okay, let's look at example two. Compare proportional relationship represented by graphs and equations. The graph on the right represents the rate at which Daniel earns points in his video game. Um, uh, the rate at which Brianna earns points in her video game is represented by the equation y equals 2x, where y is the number of points and X is the time in minutes. At these rates, who will earn 100 points first? So first, you're gonna find Brianna's rate. Okay, you can substitute one for X to find the unit rate, where when X is one, Y is equal to two. So your point is one comma two. And then one comma three represents Daniel's uh, unit rate of points per minute. So that means one minute, two points earned for Brianna. And every minute, three points earned for da Daniel. So, so you'll see that Daniel will, will earn 100 points first because they start at the same uh, zero. Example three, compare proportional relationships represented by graphs and verbal descriptions. The graph represents the cost per ounce of a granola cereal. A 15 ounce box of a raisin cereal costs $3.9, which cereal costs more per ounce? You can use equivalent ratio to find the cost per ounce of the raisin cereal. So you see that, um, you see that 15 ounce box 
is $3.9. So you can find the unit rate. How much dollars would that be in per ounce? And that's going to be $0.26. So 26 cents per ounce. And you can represent that using graph. So uh, 1, 1, 0.25, 2, 0.5, 3, um, 0.75, and then 4, 1, 5, 1.25, and so on. So every, uh, every ounce would be 20, 26 cents, right? Um, so the raisin cereal will be $0.26 per ounce. The granola cereal is $0.25 per ounce. Okay, so that's 0 0.26, that's 0 0.25. You have these points. 10 comma 2.5 means you have $10 per 2.5 ounces. So that's um, 0 0.25 per ounce. Okay, so the raisin cereal costs more per ounce, this one. So let's look at try it. The distance covered by the fastest high speed train in Japan traveling at maximum speed is represented on the graph. The fastest high speed train in the United States traveling at a maximum speed covers 600 kilometers in two and a half hours. This is US. Okay, which train has a greater maximum speed? So you're gonna compare their unit rates. Basically, you'll compare their slopes. So US is 600 kilometers per two and a half hours. That means how many kilometers per one hour? Divide 600 by 2.5. You can add you can move the decimal place by one to the right. And so 25 times two is 50. 20 times, well, 25 times four is 100. And so 240 kilometers per hour would be the states. And then look at, um, look at Japan's. Some points are kind of hard to uh, really, really, see like these points we're not sure if it's exactly 300 or, or is that 310 320 that one is a little bit less than 700 that one you can say maybe 3.1 hours and a thousand it's okay if you estimate okay so the best we could do um for the japan would be about three hours, well, 3.1 and a thousand. But look at the unit rate, one comma what? About 300 or 310, just a little bit over that, okay, is uh, per hour. But it's definitely greater than 240, right? So you can say that the Japan is going to be faster. A high speed train in Japan has a greater maximum because the maximum speed of the high speed train in the US is 240 kilometers per hour. According to the graph, the high speed train in Japan travels more than 600 kilometers in two hours, which is greater than 240 kilometers per hour. Okay, so compare the unit rates by graph and you can now um, get the unit rate from the equation as well. So use whatever information you have. There are multiple ways 
to find proportional relationships. So let's summarize our lesson. Um, 7-5 was all about comparing proportional relationships. To compare proportional relationships represented in different ways, you find the unit rate or the constant of proportionality for each representation. So you can either get a table and compare them and get a unit rate. You can look at the graph and look at the and get the unit rate by looking at the movement. And then you can look at the equation to figure out the unit rate. Okay, so that was lesson five. In the next lesson, in lesson six, we'll uh, learn how to connect proportional relationships and slope. So if you have any more questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Bye.